Ahava blessings and welcome to our sacred talk. I am with Krishna Rose. I am Ana Otero, and we will be speaking about Mary Magdalene and beyond Mary Magdalene. And so um, Krishna is going to start introducing herself and talking a little bit about the intention of our sacred talks, because this may be the first one you're seeing, but our intention is to create a lot more content. So welcome, Krishna. Thank you. It's a, such a delight to be here with everybody, uh, especially with you, Anna, um, because we decided that with so much madness and craziness and upheaval and uncertainty going on in the collective, that how could she and I together come together um, under this banner of Mary Magdalene to spread peace, to find solutions to these everyday problems that we're all experiencing, these upheavals that we're all feeling in our energy field, and uh, to answer some very specific uh, questions regarding the, the true history um, of Mary Magdalene and Yeshua, who I call Yesu, um, because a lot of their story has been weak, weak, weakened by watered down new agey rhetoric and both Anna and I in our friendship discussions have been having these animated discussions about this subject about how can we bring the truth out and separate it like the wheat from the chaff how can we help people to understand who Mary Magdalene and Yeshua really were and um how can we bring their teachings through today in such a way that can help people to unite and come together at a time when we are all being separated by very divisive forces. So uh, I think that this is going to be a very lively and very um, interesting discussion. This is our first. <laughs> so, um, Krishna, could you just, um, I'm, I'm sure many people know who you are, but can you just introduce yourself a little bit? Oh, sure. Thank you. So my name is Krishna Rose and I'm an author of a book called Woman in Red, Magdalene Speaks. Uh, I spent 35 years researching history uh, to decipher and find all the broken pieces of Yeshua and Magdalene's lives that had been very purposefully fragmented with the hammer of the Vatican, the Roman Catholic Church, which very decisively uh, scattered the truth, the true teachings and the true story of Magdalene and her husband. And uh, when I was eight years old, I was taken to a tomb in India, in Srinagar, Kashmir, where my, uh, my father's family live. And this tomb was the tomb of Jesus Christ. And so when I went to this tomb, I was full of a million eight-year-old questions. How did he come here? Well, how is it possible that his body is here? Didn't he float off on a cloud? You know, all these questions. So I think already at eight years old, I had this journalistic style thought in my mind that I was going to discover the true story of Jesus and that I would not give up. I would be relentless like, uh, like a historian journalist. And so that's what I did. I really set about looking for all the, the breadcrumbs that had been left behind by um, Mary Magdalene and her family. And they, they are there, and I was able to piece them all together and write this cohesive story in their honor to present to the world the closest to the true story of their lives and their teachings, which are as relevant today as they are, as they were 2000 years ago. So um, that has been my life passion, I guess. And it's been a great honor to be their scribe, if you like. I'm a historian and I'm a healer and I'm a, a writer and a speaker. So I dedicate my whole life being to this work and to the work of bringing forth uh, the pure teachings of both Mary Magdalene and Yesu, but also of um, the divine through its various sources. Beautiful, Krishna. While I was listening to you, I felt so connected to everything that you're saying. And I'll start from your the first part of your um, expression when you talked about um, the intention of our coming together to do these sacred talks. Um, and the intention is, again, seeing this watered down version of Magdalene, uh, Yeshua, 
uh, the Rosca Mística, right? The spirituality just being watered down, connecting more to a consciousness that could be um, something very celestial, but forgetting about that they were teachers, that they lived here, that there's a history, and that as teachers incarnated who did embody the Holy Spirit, they did ascend, um, looking at their lives and seeing how they prayed and how they chanted and how they drummed and how they went into ecstasy and how they purified, all of that helps us understand how they attained it, right? Yes, and, and therefore how we can attain it. That's it. And and this is what <laughs> fascinates me, and I think that's why you and I connect so much. It fascinates me because the the path of the Magdalene, the path of, of the Christ, right, or this, this Gnostic or mystical, let's call it mystical path, is not an easy one, right? No. It's just... No. You know, having, you know, being a Magdalene is not just, you know, having beautiful clothes and being on a tree and saying, look how beautiful I am. <laughs> I'm a mirror I'm right. It's for me, it's a very, very, it's a path of the dark night of the soul. It's a path it to, you to, to your truth. Right. And, and it takes us into the desert, right? The desert, the emptiness yes. stripped from everything we have. Our clothes. We're naked with nothing but our hair. <laughs> <laughs> the power and the strength of our hair, right? <laughs> yes. Because for a time, and, and I think it was during the year 2023, when I saw this, uh, everything was like this, this explosion of Magdalene energy everywhere. And I saw how, you know, Mary Magdalene and ayahuasca, Mary Magdalene and cacao. And I believe in the integration of spirituality, but in the integration through Alaha, through God, right? Yes. And, and, and through God. truth. And truth. It has to be what was Mary Magdalene into? What were her ways? How did she really live? Because you can't just add a cacao ceremony to Mary Magdalene's name. You can't say this is how you can manifest your, your wealth through Mary Magdalene. When that was completely the opposite of her existence was to let go of her material position, her, her material designations, and uh, to even let go of the clothes she wore eventually because she was an ascetic. She really wanted to embody Yeshua's teachings to the point where she gave up every inch of the wealth that she had. And even um, caring for her ego and caring what others thought of her. I mean, can you imagine in 2000 years ago for a woman to strip herself naked and live in a cave? It's so, um, so beyond the norm. And yet people flocked to her. They came in droves to her caves for healings and to, to hear her wisdom. Why? Because she walked her talk. Yes. And the problem with these Magdalens that are now springing up everywhere, charging money for this and that, is that they're not walking their talk. They can talk, but are, are they are they practicing like this? Are they, are they really embodying how Magdalene and Yeshua, Yesu, really used to live and the way they lived was so humble and so not about money <laughs> about money so not about vanity right yes and, exactly and and it's interesting because um when i when i do retreats in glastonbury I'll, i always stay in a beautiful cottage that a friend of mine rent um lets me stay there it's a beautiful place and i feel really really grounded and one time we were having a conversation and she said, you know, it's really interesting because when I see what you do, when you post things, it seems it's it's so spiritual. But then when I see the word Mary Magdalene connected to anything else I see, it seems all about vanity. And, yes, and sex. <laughs> yes, vanity and sex. And she's not spiritual or religious. So she was confused. It's not about vanity. Right? Well, Krishna, you said something about the ego, testing the ego. And we always talk about Mary Magdalene and the seven demons, right? Yeshua had to go through his demons when he was baptized he did. by the Baptist he did. in the desert. In the yes. Desert. And if you read the Aramaic translation, he said that a dark angel came and showed him everything that he could have. 
yes you can have you can have this you can have that and he was fighting against it his own ego because he knew he had the power of spirit and the power of the word and the angel was saying you can be powerful i can give you everything and he said no yeah how difficult it was like he was really really going through these demons that's a lesson for us to learn krishna it's the struggle of us all <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, he showed us with the cross that he bore, he showed us that to give to purity, to pure living, to innocent living, to humble living, that that is the path and that is the way. And if we're not walking that path, we shouldn't be talking that path. That's how I feel about these teachers who claim to be this and that. And then I listen to them and it's very watered down and there's very little actual substance or real history um, to what they're saying. And having spent 35 years of my life immersed in the historical side of it, uh, I do feel like a little bit of an expert without getting my ego too involved in this. I do feel like I'm an expert in the history and much of the history, when, like for example, when people say that Mary Magdalene is connected to uh, Isis or she was a priestess of Isis or she was a sex tantric worker or a priestess, a sexual tantric priestess, that it really irks me because I know the history and these things are not based on any history. They're just based on people saying their own uh, mishmosh of what they think Mary Magdalene was based on other things that they heard from other people who just think that that would be a good mix. Oh yes, Jesus is the son of Cleopatra, you know. Okay, I mean, I hear so many watered down truths and yet, because I know the history, I am especially passionate about writing these wrongs. Uh, so that's why we're coming together to have these types of conversations. So um, uh, what I would like to do, if you don't mind, is begin with our first topic of the day, which yes. is how can we help people unite and come together who are of different religions and different beliefs politically or spiritually, because we're living in a very troubled time where governments are calling to divide us. They're very manipulative and clever, like Satan, to use the media to divide us as humans. Well, there's the people who believe in this, and then there's the people who believe in that. And then there's the, the Muslims, and then there's the Christians, and then there's the whites, and then there's the blacks, and just separating you know, the Trump supporters from the Democrats and all of this. And so all of these divisive mechanisms have now created what we're almost on the brink of what I would say is a civil war. And so um, is there a way, Anna, that we can unite the people? And if so, what is the remedy? Well, when I, I ask my, myself this question a lot, and every day when I do my practice, I pray for humanity. That's one of the things I do, and I do my rosary practice, and I pray, I pray for humanity. And there's, I mean, when when I think in in my own experience, of course, we we can see what's happening, right? We can, from the external and say this is crazy. And then when I read, um, I love reading uh, Hebrew mysticism and Christian mysticism. When I read, for example, the Zohar or the Bayir, and they talk about the two mothers, we've got the true mother, which is Mother Eve. Right, and she's the tree of life, and then we've got the dark mother, which is Lilith, which is seen as a demon. She's a demon, and she yes. she governs the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is by default where we came through, right? But we, mm -hmm. when we release the veils of illusion, we become the tree of life again, and so this. Mm -hmm creation energy because everything is a creation energy wants us to be separated right it mm -hmm. wants us to to fight each other when it's crazy because when you look at yeshua yeshua was open and he was hebrew he was open mm -hmm. to everyone coming in the women mm -hmm. men right yes nowadays when he went to the with the samaritan woman and he was in the well right mm -hmm. and and this was a village that didn't accept Jews. And he knew that, but he didn't care. And, and he, and in his time, even a woman who had committed adultery would be stoned to death. And stone a woman, he said, the one who is free of sin, you throw the first stone. And he had such a powerful energy field that everyone moved back. 
They were afraid. They were afraid. And he told her, he said, go, go back and, and don't do it again. Don't sin, which actually means don't move away from your truth. It's beautiful. Yes, that's, that's what he meant. So he was teaching us that we are our own salvation. Right, we are mm. our own salvation. And what's happening in the world is that social media, which is actually like a few years ago, I loved it because it was a way of sharing. And I still love it, but I have to be careful with it. Yes. Sharing yourself and you know, building community. And all of a sudden, sometimes when I even open my, my phone, things come out that I don't even follow. And I'm thinking, yeah. what is this? And speaking and speaking. And so there is this dark energy. There is. Yes. And I yes. don't want to feed into it. But it exists. It's a dark, lilith energy who is creating, who has created many, various egregores through social media to separate humanity. And you look at what's, and I'm not going to go into that because it's very delicate what's happening right now in the Middle East. They're brothers. They come from the same father. You know, it's the same. And the thing is, is it's even deeper than that because when we say that they are brothers coming from Abraham, actually it's even deeper than that because we're all brothers and sisters created by one god yes. and one goddess no matter what we call that one god whether we call god allah whether we call god god or yahweh or krishna that there is only one supreme lord supreme being and everything else is secondary to that and we came from those same supreme beings and we are all therefore brothers and sisters before that supreme lord and supreme lady and i believe that the uniting force the message that i believe that yesu and mary magdalene right now would want us to portray to the world is that divine love is our uniting force because whether you're whether you're a muslim whether you're Hindu, whether you're Christian, whether you are white, whether you're black, whether you're brown, our ultimate goal is to give love and to receive love with the divine. And we all are searching for that, no matter what we call those divine beings. We're all wanting that same loving force to come into us and to express that out into the world. We all want to be good. We all want people to like us. So we all really want the same things. Now, these satanic forces, and I'm going to call them what they are because that's what they are. They're, that These are the satanic forces that Jesus spoke about 2,000 years ago. And they're the same forces. This is a great ancient manipulation of evil that has divided us. And we, unfortunately, have forgotten our true nature, our true nature, the soul is made of love and bliss. And we are all made of that same sacred essence. We're all uniquely different from one another and we always retain our uniqueness and our difference because it is our um, individuality that God likes to taste because he wants to have relationship with us. So therefore, divine love is the force that connects us with God and Goddess. Therefore, it's our uniting force as brothers and sisters. We can all come in underneath the umbrella of divine love and not, I don't need anybody to become my religion. I don't need anybody to say that what I'm saying is right or me to say what they think is wrong. We're all individual and therefore we're all given freedom to believe as we would like. So I personally think that the, that the teaching of divine love and the teaching that we're all brothers and sisters before God is the very teaching that can unite all of us together despite our differences. What do you think of that? It, uh, definitely, Krishna. And if you look in the mystical teachings of all expressions of religions and spiritualities, this is what they say. We are yes. love. We are love essence. We are love source. We come from that beautiful uh, God, Allah consciousness. We are all mirrors of Allah. Us, we are creating as well. We are creating in, in the divine's name. But we need to ask ourselves, what are we creating in the divine's name? Because we are... So let me ask you. When you say Allah, do you mean the same thing as Allah? No, is Allah, it the same thing? 
Allah is a word that I I started using years ago because it's the word that Yeshua uses for God. And mm -hmm. it's Allah. And it means sacred unity. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. It means that Beautiful. everything is unified in oneness. And so mm. when it speaks of Allah, you can say Divine Mother, Father, they're both in it together because it's a unity, nice. consciousness of both the masculine and the feminine. And when I read about this, I could feel it. And I love the way it sounds, right? It's like Allah, mm -hmm. I can feel it in my heart. And yeah. so since Yeshua used it, I started using it. And and since I'm, I'm passionate about Aramaic and the Aramaic scriptures and the translating them to understand the true meaning uh, the true meaning of Yeshua's words and teachings, we imitate a master, a teacher, and you know this because uh, because of your practice. If we use the same words, the same chants, we be, we receive mm -hmm. a transmission. We receive yes. a transmission. And so by saying this holy name that Yeshua said so much, I can feel I can feel him guiding me, right? I can feel that yes. because ultimately when you were talking about divine love, I like to call it mystical sexuality, where we're having yeah. a Co create a relationship with the divine. We're together, and 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 this is one of the things that we, we we all we all need to look within right now. Where we all it's not even pointing fingers. When we see the separation in the world, we can ask ourselves, and and we all know this. We're practicing consciousness. Where am I in separation? Where am I judging? Right? Where am I yes. still not healing? Where do I still have resentment? In, inside of, of me so you know it's all we're all mirroring each other these satanic forces because they are satanic and, and, and it's true Yeshua called them satanic forces forces they want humanity to to be fragment yeah, fragmented That's then we're weak then we're weak yeah and so they're creating an inner separation separation within families separation within cultures separation yeah. within countries and so yeah to the point that now you need to be careful with even the words that you say, right? So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so this is even more so that if we can see, you know, that inside of everybody is this divine spark. This is why we say namaste. Yeah. When we when we greet each other, we say namaste because we are honoring the God in everyone. That God sits in everybody's heart. Therefore, we can love and accept everyone, no matter yeah. what their beliefs are. Look, there's 99% good in everybody. And then there's 1% that could be considered like dark or crap or whatever. And so what do we choose to focus on? Yeah. If, we, if we focus on the 1%, of darkness or weakness or whatever it is that we perceive as worthy of our judgment in another person, then that is what grows in our mind of that person. And that is not healthy for them or for us. My Guru Dave, he used to say that when we judge somebody, that you build a bridge between your heart and the heart of the person you're criticizing and that their bad qualities they crawl over this bridge and come into your heart. And then within one month, you'll see that you yourself have the same quality you were judging. So, and then another thing that I really love that was part of what you were saying is that when, when you put rocks into a bag, Hopefully it's a nice soft velvet bag, but you know, if you if you put rocks and I'm, I'm the analogy is, is the rocks are all of us. You put them all in a bag together and you, you start shaking the bag a little bit and all the rocks are bumping up against each other. Hey, your edge, your edge hurt me just now. Your edge hurt me. Well, your hardness hurt me. You know, so all of us are feeling these bumps and these edges because we're being shaken by the material energy and by karma. And so we blame each other and we shame each other and we anger each other with our um, thinking that they're the problem when actually Everything, my Guru Dave used to say, everything that comes to us is our own left hand punching us. It's all karmic coming back to us from the past. So actually what happens to rocks when they bump up against each other in a bag is the rocks slowly, slowly they become smooth until they become shiny. And then there's no more agitation when they're being bumped up against because they're smooth. So these difficulties that, you know, when we stop judging, 
and we stop gossiping and we stop criticizing one another and we look for the love that's there in every living being because it's there and inside of every living being is is someone who is aching someone who is hungry for love someone who feels misunderstood someone who has been wounded by somebody somewhere down the line and if we can speak to that in each other and we come from that place in each other it doesn't matter what color our skin is what religion we believe in what pol what political party we vote for all of these things they just melt away in this beautiful ideal that yeshua yesu and mary magdalene what they i like to say both names because if i if i only say yeshua then i feel like i'm in some way not not saying yesu which is like how I know him. So of forgive course. me if I say them no, both. No, I I'm, love it. I love I'm it. I really enjoyed when you, when you talked about the judgment. Um, when we judge people in, in Hebrew mysticism, it is said that when we judge others, we are judged 10 times stronger. Yes. And so, and like you said, maybe a few days, a few weeks later, we will be judged. And then we will take on even the attributes of that person. When we judge someone, it's because that person is here to trigger us. And then when we start to become triggered, Satan gets closer. Judge, come on, you can do it. Judge, because that's what Satan wants. So fighting Satan and say, saying, no, I'm not judging because we are one. We're mirroring each other. This person has come to me in this moment to trigger me because I'm the one in this moment that needs to heal something.